How's it going, guys? We have a difficult question for biochemistry for step one. Maybe some of you will think this is easy, but it's not easy. Okay. Now I could spend 24 minutes talking about every detail about this condition. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay focused just on these answer choices here, make this clip more concise. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now let's start the clip. So 28-year-old woman at 12 weeks gestation. She's a known carrier of Delta F508, and the father's genotype is unknown. And if the fetus is known to have cystic fibrosis, then the question is asking about abnormal transport of which electrolytes across some epithelial surfaces, okay? The father need not have Delta F508 mutation. This is most common, but there's allelic heterogeneity. A myriad of mutations can lead to, lead to disease. So cystic fibrosis codes, uh, the CFTR gene codes for CFTR channel. It's a chloride channel. We know instantly we're looking at choices A or B. I said this is a hard question though. So when we think of important locations where this channel plays a role, alveolar uh, epithelium, pancreatic ducts, and sweat glands. Now, for the uh, pulmonary epithelium and the pancreatic ducts, the CFTR channel is going to be secreting chloride from the cells, so from the alveolar pneumocytes uh, into the alveolar spaces and from the pancreatic acinar cells into the pancreatic ducts. So it's secreting chloride outward, out of the cell, okay? Now, if that channel's fucked up and it's sequestered in the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the cytosol, that's a high yield tangential point. But if the CFTR channel's fucked up and you can't secrete chloride, then we build up negative charge within the cell, right? So what's gonna happen is, is ENAC upregulates, which allows for sodium outside the cell to move into the cell to balance charge? The answer is B. Now you say, well, that's a really fucking weird detail. Can you explain, like, is there any uh, significance to that? Okay, this is going to make sense. So as I just fucking said, if the chloride builds up in the cell because CFTR channel is not working, ENAC upregulates, so sodium, which is positively charged, can move into the cell to balance, then water follows sodium. So that means that we have dried up secretions. Inspissated secretions, nice fancy vocabulary word. So inspissation refers to uh, desiccating within a lumen, drying up within a lumen. So the reason we get sticky, thick uh, pulmonary secretions in cystic fibrosis, the reason we get pancreatic exocrine insufficiency is because the secretions are dried up, they're inspissated. It's because the water is following this, the water from the lumen or from the alveolar spaces is following the sodium into the cell to balance the charge because the chloride can't move out of the cell. In the sweat glands, it's the opposite, okay? Chloride's going into the cell, and instead we get high chloride on the skin surface, okay? Positive sweat chloride test, greater than 60 milliequivalents per liter. So I know this sounds fucking stupid. It sounds pedantic. Not my fucking opinion, okay? This is on one of the offline step one forms. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.